In this video, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to test predictive validity using subsamples. Um, the idea starts from this paper uh, and another paper. Uh, basically, this bunch of researchers, what they propose is that um, if you generated one model from one sample, um, you need to test the predictive validity of that model using additional sample. In this video, I'm going to show you how to using how to generate that additional sample by randomly split the original sample into two subsamples. So let's get started. Uh, this is a this is an original uh, sample, okay, in SPSS. And uh, I'm going to randomly split the sample into two subsamples. First, I'm going to um, do this, randomly select about 50% of the case. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to just filter out um, the ones that deselected. So basically the step gives us a new um, variable, it's called filter. Um, so some of about 50% of the cases were selected and uh, uh, labeled one for this new variable and the other about 50% of the cases were labeled zero for this new variable. Okay, And then I'm going to create a new data set using that variable. So if the filter variable equals one, I'm going to name it subsample. And if the new uh, variable equals zero, I'm going to name it holdout sample. And uh, Okay, so I have uh, two subsamples, um, and then, so the, uh, so so there are two criteria uh, that you need to check for predict validity. First is that you need to compare results from your original sample to the results of your subsample, and the two is you need to compare results from your holdout sample to the results of your subsample. Yeah, it's it's a little I know it's a little complicated, but might be helpful if you write it down. Um, so let's start it with the original sample. Um, let's use FSQCA to test the, what factors contribute to uh, the outcome condition. Um, so the first step in FSQCA is to save the data in CSV format. And this is the original sample. Um, open the FSQCA software and uh, open the original data and um, just click, gonna quickly pr perform the FSQC. So in, this is a large sample that has more than 500 sample size. Uh, therefore, I set the cutoff score for the frequency uh, as three and the cutoff for the uh, consistency is 0.9. And based on the literature, I know this uh, the percent of condition B and condition F and the absent of condition C and condition E that contributes to the presence of the outcome. All right, so here's my results. Um, this is solution coverage, the solution consistency. And first, I'm going to check whether results from the subsample um, is about the same as the results of the original sample. So I need to create a data set for the subsample. And open the data set that we just created. Now here's a uh, here's a part that's slightly different from when we did the FSQC analysis for original sample. For the original sample, because we have uh, more than 500 cases, we set the cutoff score for the frequency of three and the cutoff score for the consistency as 0.9. Now, because in our subsample, the sample size is about the half of the original sample size. Um, so I'm going to, so, so the way you set up your cutoff score for the frequency should be lower than the frequency, than the cutoff for the frequency of the previous original sample. So the logic is that, uh, imagine that um, you have, uh, so you want to measure, um, you know, you want to, you don't want to measure uh, what are the characteristics of the female in a group of people. Well, if your sample has 10 people, uh, chances are high that you're gonna get have more than three females, right? Versus if you only have three people, what's your chance of having more than three females? Well, your chance is zero because there's total of three 
people. So the maximum number of female you have is, is going to be three. There's not going to be more than three females, right? So that's the logic behind this uh, procedure. That um, So if you, you set the cutoff score for frequency score for the original sample as three, then in the subsample, you need to set it either as one or two. And the consistency cutoff score, it can be slightly higher because you have smaller samples. So um, people are more likely to be, you know, concentrate on a, a, a less number of configurations. So the consistency is going to be higher. Um, okay, and the, the theoretical model should be the same because, you know, it's the same population. And here we got our results. So we're gonna, so what we're going to do is that um, remember the first stat, the first criteria of the testing of predictive validity is to compare the results from your subsample to the results of the original sample. So um, our original sample results is this, right? 0 0.832, 0 0.922. Let's see. In our subsample, it's 0 0.823 and 0 0.914. So it's about the same. So that's a good thing. So we passed the first criteria of testing the predict validity, okay? And now I'm gonna do uh, proceed to the second step, which is compare results from the holdout sample to results of the of the subsample. Uh, so to do this, first you need to uh, you pick out a few uh, configurations in your from the results of your subsample uh, that's uh, highest, so you have a highest shot. Um, so let's see, this three configurations, especially this one, has the highest consistency score. Uh, so the idea is that if this model uh, has, you know, predictive validity, then you test this model in a new sample. In this case, it's going to be our holdout sample. Um, it should predict the outcome pretty well. And based on the logic of FSQCA, um, if you don't know what the logic behind FXUCA is, you probably need to read the textbook. Um, it's based on Boolean uh, algebra, uh, you know, about set, subset, all that. Um, and uh, if your predictability is high, you should generate a graph like this, um, in which all your dots is above the uh, diagonal. Um, the x-axis represents your um, causal condition set, and the y-axis represents your outcome set. Um, so all your the, the, so the membership score of each data should uh, in your uh, in your uh, causal condition set should be uh, should be s smaller than its membership score in the outcome set. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go deep into the the theoretical um, the the theories behind this. I'm just gonna show you the, the how to how to do it. Um, okay. So let's just focus on this configuration. It's a B, uh, neg C, neg D, neg E, uh, positive F, and positive G. So B, F, G, and C, D, E. Okay. Uh, so uh, the way we plot this, this we draw that draw the graph is to um, first uh, you need to create the uh, individual construct. So we have positive B and we have positive F, but we need neg C, D, and E. And the way you do that is really simple. Um, so the negative C is the, 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 the membership of score uh, of a case in the, in the negative set as the original set. OK. Um, I mean, I, I did not say this clearly. You, I mean, the, the clearest way to express it is, is, is uh, reading in the textbook. Um, OK, so next C, next D and neg f. Okay. And uh, then, uh, oh, I also need neg l, because the outcome is a, it's a, it's a negative. Okay. And uh, so then we need to create the x-axis. Um, well, based on this textbook, uh, in order to compute, oh, some, some students ask for the textbook. It's called Redesign Social Inquiry, Fuzzy Sets and Beyond by Rajan, published in 2008. Okay, and in it, it says that um, in order to compute a case degree of membership in a combination of conditions, it is necessary simply to use the lowest membership score among the causal conditions. Okay, so now we're gonna do that. Um, remember, this is what we need. We need the uh, membership score of each case in uh, this combination of conditions, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. 
uh, so we need B, C, D, E, F, G. And that equals the minimum score, the minimum of the membership score among these six conditions. So B, C, D, E, and F, G. Click OK. Now you can see that um, I'm just going to move it around a little bit. Now, you see, uh, this, this, any anyone, uh, any case membership score in this uh, combination of conditions equals the minimum score of all the construct sets. So for example, in this, in this case, uh, the, this is a score membership in this set, this score membership in set NAC C, the membership score in set NAC D, membership score in set NAC F. What's the minimum score among this? Well, it's this, right, NAC C. Therefore, the membership score uh, is, is this. Uh, F, G, oh, it's C, D, E. Not CDF. Okay, we did it wrong. CDE or CDF? CDE. Right. So I need next. I need next E. Uh, that's why you always double check. Every time you create a new variable, always double check. Um, Okay, B, C, D, E, F, G. C, D, E, F, G. Okay. Okay, so now we have B, C, D, E, F, G. So and see that um, a, a case membership in B, C, D, E, F, G. This com com combination of conditions is a minimum um, of the of its membership in the other construct, which is you know next C for this case, and it's point five for this case, right? Okay. So that's our um, x axis, and we already create our y axis. So. Uh, to draw the xy plot, you just need to cr put the uh, combination of condition, membership score on the x-axis, and whatever outcome variable that you're trying to do um, should be neck L here. Boom. There you go. Uh, this is a, the xy plot for the holdout sample based on the model that you generated from the subsample. Isn't that cool? This is a low smartphone addiction. And this is a solution configuration. This is one of the configurations in that solution. And then you can just copy and paste into uh, your paper. Boom. Now we test it that this model has high predictability. Uh, thanks for watching and please check out my other videos.